Peace be with you. This is Catholic Sports Radio, located at the intersection of your faith life and sports life, and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and lots and lots of other platforms. I am Bruce Wozniak, talking with Catholic guests who are current or former athletes, coaches, referees, umpires, clergy, administrators, and more from the pro, amateur, and scholastic ranks about the intersection of their faith life and their sports life. My sincere thanks for joining me for this and hopefully many other episodes. Always feel free to get in touch with me. You can write to bruce at catholicsportsradio.net or even DM me through the at cathsportsradio Instagram account or send a private message through the Facebook page. There are links to those social media accounts and Twitter also on the show website, catholicsportsradio.net, where you can also sign up for free for the new weekly e-newsletter. Now on to my ministry moment for this episode. In one of the closing athlete's prayers that I have used on this show from time to time, we hear the words, Free me from the temptation to fake, to foul, to cheat. There is great restraint needed to overcome, sadly, what could become situations where it would be easy to do something against the rules that would affect the outcome of a game in a dishonest manner. We hear what big business sports betting has become, and the concern about cheating isn't unreasonable in that context. But this type of provocation isn't exclusive to sports, and we all must recognize who is the architect behind all this deceit. Under the heading of Lead Us Not Into Temptation, Pope Francis writes, quote, The one who leads us into temptation is Satan. That is Satan's craft. The meaning of our prayer is, When Satan leads me into temptation, please God, give me a hand, give me your hand. It is like that painting in which Jesus holds his hand out to Peter, who is imploring him, Lord, save me, I am drowning, give me your hand. End quote. Friends, let us heed these words from the Holy Father and rededicate ourselves to honesty and our baptismal promise to reject Satan and all his works. Moving on now with this week's episode, my guest is a former professional tennis player who is now a speaker, an author, and the tennis coach at Holy Spirit Prep in Atlanta, Georgia, with an amazing story of a nervous system disorder that left her quadriplegic. She had been the number one tennis player in her country of origin, Costa Rica, including having been Central American champion for nine years and representing her country at the Central American Games. She even has a Spanish-language podcast aimed at offering tools to live each day with hope in suffering. Welcome to Catholic Sports Radio, Paula Umania. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be part of this beautiful program. And thank you so much, Bruce, for this invitation. Absolutely, absolutely. So obviously, from what I just read, you were born in Costa Rica. Share with us about growing up there, what your family was like, and the prevalence of the Catholic faith where you were born and raised. Well, you know, Costa Rica is a small country, but it's so beautiful, and people from the United States love to go there because the nature, you know. I was born in a family of seven children, and I am the youngest. Wow. And, uh, you know, the Catholic traditions in Latin America and in Costa Rica are really strong. I remember being, when I was little, that uh, I always used to hear my grandmother she was sitting in a, in a chair, and she always used to be doing something like, and I was like, what is she doing? And she was always play, praying the rosary mm. all the time. It is very beautiful, but for us it was an amazing, um, you know, we were so exciting when First Communion was coming, and impossible to miss the Mass every Sunday, you know. That is the way I grow this. Mm. Very nice, very nice. Is it true that you started playing tennis at just six years old? Yes, I remember the first time my dad came to my house and he said, oh, we became members of a tennis club um, in San Jose, Costa Rica, and he brought me a little wood racket, 
And the next day, immediately, we just went to the club and I started hitting the ball against the wall. And for me, it was fascinating. And I just uh, started to play tennis like that wow. uh, when I was very little. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and by the age of 12, you were already the number one junior player in Costa Rica. Were you already thinking, even at such a young age, that you wanted to become a professional tennis player? No, at all. No, I at that time uh, I didn't. I remember being twelve. Um, I was just playing like national tournaments and starting. Uh, maybe that was the first time I went to another country to play. It was Panama, that is next to Costa Rica. But it was super hard at that time for me. Imagine a family of seven kids, and for my dad it was uh, you know very difficult to be able to afford a tennis career for somebody. Mm. Um, but, you know, God provides and things start to get better. In the time For the time when I was 17, I take a very serious decision in my life that was to become a professional tennis player and dedicate all, you know, all the time just to practice maybe eight or nine hours a day of tennis. Wow, wow. Yeah, and then you moved to the United States at the age of 18, and you were practicing at a tennis academy in southeast Florida. But I wonder, Paula, at that same time, what was your Catholic faith looking like at that age and with tennis being seemingly the focal point of your life? Well, the process sounds funny, but um, it was, I remember when I was national champion, it, it was difficult for for my parents to afford everything and and for me it was a dream to play more serious tennis but my brother-in-law came to Costa Rica and he founded the first tennis academy in my country um i remember he studies at uh, south carolina and uh and he became a tennis coach mm. So he was the one who who asked me the question would you like to take tennis serious and play you know, every day and to do homeschooling and and practice. And I was like, yes, but I need to be able to afford all these expenses for my dream. Sure. So I remember I used to start praying for that, Mm. you know, like this is my dream. I, I would love to accomplish this. But how, you know, uh, for my father was, you know, maybe once a year going somewhere, but not, everywhere and everything you need to be a professional tennis player. Um, so I think that was the beginning also for me to to be very close to God. I was just praying for finding a way to do it. And, and I remember I found uh, some Catholic uh, friends and also I started to call some companies in my country and I was able to get good sponsors and that's how I was able to come to the United States. It's so funny, Bruce, because I remember the first time I came to the United States, and it's something that sounds very normal for everybody, but I remember the first time I went to a supermarket, <laughs> and I was like, wow, peaches and apples and, mm. and grapes, because in my country was bananas and pineapples and papayas, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, yeah, and being able to buy anything for me, in the supermarket was like, wow, you know, and um, and then the sponsor started to give me all kind of tennis uniforms and all the rackets I needed and the tennis shoes on that time. Wow. And, you, you know, I grow, I remember I used to, because I used to practice a lot. I, do you remember, I don't know, Bruce, if you know about the shoe goo? That that thing that you use in your shoe because when you get a hole and you need to, oh right, uh, you want to keep using your shoes. Right. Well, we were experts on that, uh, <laughs> and I remember when I got my first. Yeah, my dad used to be expert in shoe goo and put it every day, every night on the shoes so we can use it again. And and then, uh, so then when I got a sponsors for them to say how many pairs of shoes you want and what brand do you want and mm. you know for me it was fascinating all that yeah it was answered prayers it sounds like uh-huh and then I moved to um, Miami Kitty's Kane and that time my coach was Patricia Pay that was the coach of Gabriela Sabatini 
And I remember the Catholic Church there, uh, well, it is still San Agnes. Mm -hmm. So I used to go, uh, you know, we used to practice by bike. And it was not easy to live in the tennis academy. There were so many girls from other countries. I was exposed to so many um, temptations and also uh, the girls, you know, bullying me and things like that. So I remember I used to practice and then go to the house where I used to live with them and have dinner. And then after that, I just used to go to the church wow. and sit down out, outside of the church. It's funny, waiting until it was going to be dark to go back to the house because the environment in the house was very bad for me. I was exposed to so many things. Mm. And, and that was the way I was able to manage, um, you know, that because sometimes when you play a sport and you travel, you're exposed to so many things. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I think I was able to survive through everything, Bruce. <laughs> mm. Wow. Wow. Well, let's fast forward to seven years ago. You were married, living in Atlanta. You just had your fifth child, the first boy, after four daughters. And then explain to the audience what happened. Well, it was funny after that, you know, the years passed, I got married and I have five children. And when I was pregnant on my fifth one, I started to feel a numbness and tingling on my hands. And I thought, oh, this is just because I'm pregnant. And, you know, I remember, Bruce, that I was in the middle of a tennis season of my company that I have here now. And I, I was managing 72 kids in competition. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, you know, when you are... Uh, you know, when we get, when I got pregnant, I'm also the woman, when you get pregnant, you start to ask yourself, can I do this? Can I do the same thing? Should I slow down? Should I, you know? Mm. But because it was my number five, I realized, oh, I can. I, I learned that I was able to do it with one, two, three, and four. <laughs> so I was like in the middle of the season and pregnant of my fifth child. And then I start to feel these symptoms. But when Charles was born, after he was born, uh, my body just started to get all paralyzed in a horrible way mm. until I was just a person in a bed, not, not being able to move. And, and for me to leave that, I mean, it was huge, of course, for any person, but becoming from being a professional tennis player and also, you know, when you... Most a lot of moms, the way they share with their kids is baking or doing crafts or reading books, but that that is not and that, that was not my style. You know, my uh -huh. style has been always like, let's go, let's go to the park, let's go to play tennis, yeah. let's go party, fiesta. You know, <laughs> all the time, moving up and down, going everywhere, and then suddenly I just, uh, you know got this neurological condition, got uh, the name is uh, called CIDP, and I uh, start to live the, you know, of course, the most difficult time of my life. Wow. Wow. And folks, Paula's amazing journey to where she is now, able to walk with the help of miraculous leg devices, includes milestones that were achieved on specific dates that were directly connected with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Before I have her share about those developments, I have to thank everyone who listens to this show each week. This is a ministry for me, and I don't get any income from doing this show, so it means so very much to me knowing that people are listening to Catholic Sports Radio. It's my aim to move more people deeper in their faith, regardless of where you currently are in your walk with Christ. So continuing to listen to what I'm doing every week really encourages me, and I'm so grateful to you for that. Unfortunately, I am just a one-person operation doing this all by myself. No staff, no volunteers, no interns, and I don't have any sponsors. So all the expenses that come with running Catholic Sports Radio have to come out of my own pocket. I have detailed over a number of episodes of this show various examples of the types of costs that I get faced with, as recently as last week, having cited yet another. 
As a result, if you do feel as though you are getting value out of Catholic Sports Radio, if you like what I'm doing, if it's helping you in your faith life, if you want to support my work through this ministry, I humbly ask you to please consider a financial contribution. On the show website, catholicsportsradio.net, there is a blue Donate to CSR button that guests and listeners alike have used to send me securely online whatever amount feels most comfortable. There's no drop-down menu of preset amounts to choose from. You put in whatever you want. Alternatively, as some folks have done, you can instead get in touch with me by sending an email to bruce at catholicsportsradio.net and I will personally write you back with the details on sending a check through the mail. I will happily say on the air the name of anyone who contributes, regardless of the amount, or as some have asked me to do, you can instead choose to remain anonymous. Do please prayerfully consider what you can do as part of your tithing as it relates to supporting my ministry through a financial contribution. I'm truly grateful to everyone who listens, and I appreciate whatever you can help me to do in continuing to work to move more people closer to Christ through this ministry. Paula, let's continue and have you share with the audience about some of those milestones that you experienced and the way they were connected to dates that were directly connected with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, it's amazing because, uh, as I mentioned to you before, I was all paralyzed in bed, and that was in 2015. And uh, in Costa Rica, we have a special date for Virgin Mary, and it's a day called the Virgin of the Angels, where everybody goes in pilgrimage uh, and walk to the country to pray and to offer and to give thanks. So my aunt decided to do everybody to go for me and pray, and that was an adult second of 2015. Well, on August 4th of 2015, that was the first time I was able to sit down. Mm. And and for me, it was amazing. I have the video when that happened. And then on February 11 of 2016, that was the the day of the Virgin of Lourdes, my mother-in-law called me and she said, I'm praying for you. I was in a wheelchair on my front porch and... That day, the therapist came to my house, and I thought we were going to do the regular, you know, exercises of moving my arms up and down and things like that. Um, But then she says, I think we should try to stand up. Mm. And that was the first time I was able to stand up, of course, with an amazing effort, holding my husband and, and her. And that was the first time I was able to move my legs up and down standing. Um... So for me, that was just amazing. But the, but the biggest miracle for me was when uh, after three years of, you know, trying and pushing and, and trying everything, my daughter Marie went on a mission trip to the Virgin of Lourdes. And all the doctors told me, you're not going to be able to walk anymore. Mm. And I had some special plastic things on my legs, and I was kind of doing some steps but with a walker mm-hmm. and I went to the supermarket and when my daughter was in the Virgin of Lourdes praying for me, a lady stopped me in the supermarket and she said, oh, I'm sorry, but I didn't walk for 12 years. And I discovered these devices I'm wearing on my legs and it's a man in Seattle that is, that is doing them. It wow. was not the Neuromuscular Excellence Center. It was somebody in the supermarket wow. telling me, Yes, and um, so she introduced me to, you know, the devices that I use right now on my legs, and um, he, and then I got them, you know, that, that was amazing. But for me, the most amazing thing is uh, that all this happened after all doctors told me I wasn't going to be able to walk, mm. and then I met this lady in the supermarket right when my daughter is in France, in Lourdes, praying for me and for my situation. Wow. So, it's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'll say. Uh, I mean, and, and you know, when that happened, it was not a moment when I was like, oh, I'm praying a lot, and all my faith was gone. I was sure I was not going to be able to walk. 
and and that just happened like that. Mm. So it is so beautiful how our blessed mother is always available for us to help us, you know, like the same way women as moms, we are available for our kids. And sometimes our kids are teenagers and they, they don't talk to us and they don't look at us. But we're always there waiting for them to come to us and help us, mm. you know, and, and to, to help in any way. So I think we we have to go to her because she's, She's amazing. <laughs> she gives us she give us things that we never expect and she our mother, I mean, it's just I love her so much. Yeah. <laughs> you fantastic. know, for, for everything that has happened in my life. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. Wow. Folks, on the show page for this episode at CatholicSportsRadio.net, I will put a link to Paula's book, which is called Forty Gifts of Hope encouragement in times of sickness and suffering. Paula, share with us about that, because it's not just a book about your story. Exactly, yes. When I was at the hospital, all paralyzed, uh, people used to come to my room and tell me, oh, you're going to be fine, and they give me flowers, and, and I'm praying for you. And it's fine. You know, everybody has a good intention when you're dealing with illness and suffering. But I remember my frustration when people used to leave the room and, and I thought, they go home walking and I'm here in the bed. So that gives me like a huge need to really get advice from the people living the same situation as me. Mm. Uh, and, and that inspires me to write this book. I learned that when you are dealing with sickness and suffering in your life, you don't have too much patience. You're in pain. Sometimes you experience anger with God. You cry a lot. And, and my principal tool was when somebody that comes to me tells me, "Oh, I went through that. I know what you know. I know what to do." So my book, my book is forty stories, very short, on purpose, because when you are dealing with suffering, sometimes you can read too much or hear too much. And 14 stories are me, and the rest is people that I interview around the world. And I spend like three hours with them, but then the story is really short. But it's not stories to entertain you. Every story inspires you how to live the day by day with your challenges, with your suffering, and especially with the sickness if you are going through that. They have... You know, there's prayers, phrases of saints, exercises, applications. Um, there is very beautiful endorsements, you know, from priests, from everybody. And and I'm very uh, thankful because it has also the approval of the Archbishop of our city, Atlanta. Wow. Um, you know, Hardmeyer. I decided to try to get that to be sure the church was going to approve the book, you know, even mm -hmm. if I'm not teaching so much dogma or anything like that. The way I wrote the book was very challenging, of course, because my hands are so, have some damage from the from the condition. Mm. So it was practically I talk I talk on my phone and and the way it was done. And and you know, I, I was not an author at all. You know, I used to be a girl that didn't care too much about writing or reading. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know. Because the mercy of God, you know, I was able to publish this beautiful book, and it has been very, very helpful for so many people. And it's funny, Bruce, because some people get the book and they like it, but when somebody's going through suffering and illness, they read the book in two days. They just can't mm. stop because because they see, oh, I love this tool, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um so that inspires me a lot, and also, I, I believe it or not, I'm still a tennis coach, and uh, the way I teach tennis is very different now, but I do, and and that helps a lot also people to inspire people with disabilities. Oh, I can still do it, you know, but I, I can do it different. Yeah, and in fact, you're also using your story to inspire audiences. I mentioned in the intro that you are also a speaker. You speak to sports, Catholic, and corporate groups, and are able to do your presentations in English, Spanish, and French? <laughs> yes, Bruce, it's true. 
I mean, I, I didn't expect I was going to become a speaker, but that was a process. There were things that came in my life, people calling me. And, and I, at the beginning, I was like, but English is my second language. Can I do this? Do they understand what I said? You know? Um, but yes, right now I am a speaker and I go wherever, I mean, anything God sends me. Uh, sometimes it's places that I don't have idea where, where I be, and then I go there and I was like, wow, this is nice, you know. But, but yes, I'm enjoying a lot. I was at EWTN a couple of weeks ago in Spanish. Um, sharing also with, with different groups, and I just love it. So, you know, I want to offer you any time if you want me to go and inspire your team. And people, most of the conference that people like the most in the church is one called Hope in Suffering, and we have a lot of fun doing that. And I also have another conference for corporate that is called Match Point, uh, where we find a relationship between sports and professional life and suffering. Mm. Well, let's back up to, you mentioned a minute or two ago about coaching, and I had said at the beginning that you are the tennis coach at Holy Spirit Prep in Atlanta, but I know you also have your own tennis business. I wonder to what extent do you or don't you use your story to motivate the student-athletes that you coach in tennis? That's interesting, Bruce. I try not to say too much because when they see a coach coming in a car with a lift wearing uh, devices on the legs, Uh using bioptic glasses, and not being able to run and hit the ball, Mm -hmm. I think that is enough evangelization, Mm. you know? Uh, And I mean the secular word. So it's funny, they come to me and ask me, and when they do that, then I share. I see. I mean, that's when I am in the secular world, you know, and also because I want people to see, oh, she can give me a professional service, even if she has a disability. Yes. But but when I am with the kids, with like middle school kids, um, we, if I'm in a Catholic school that I love to do that, of course, we always pray before practice. Mm. And then I said, okay, kids, I'm going to share with you a two-minute story. And I give them titles of story. Mm. You know, like uh, the the girl that stole my game or the, the, the book racket or how I been, went back to the court, whatever. I, I just say attractive titles, you know? Mm-hmm. And then they pick one, and then I share something with them like that to put a seat in their hearts, and then we go ahead and play. Wow, um, I like that. I like that. So, think, you know what happened, Bruce? It is a little bit like, I don't know if I do right or wrong, but, but the way I evangelize, I try to, to give baby food depending on the environment where I am. Mm. Um, because I want to pull them slowly, you know, like, yes. oh, wh- why can she do that? What happened? You know, uh, I think if I say everything at the beginning like that, then if they are not believers, they can reject the message. Um, so I try to use a lot of a strategy with everybody around me, depending on which environment I am, you know, um, and then, of course, when I'm in a, but my favorite is when I'm in a Catholic conference because boom, I can go ahead and share all the miracles and, sure. and everything like that. Sure. Uh, it has been hard for me to manage that. Also, when I'm in a corporate, um, I, I, it took me months to discern, God, do you want me to do this? Because I want to talk about you everywhere I go. <laughs> but at the same time, the priest told me, my priest told me, Go slowly, give them baby food, because you're going to try to discern, okay, how can I touch the souls, you right, know? Right, And make them see Catholic Church is wonderful, and everything, all the treasures that we have, and how can we spread the faith everywhere we go. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Well, let's close with what I'm thinking is going to be an inspirational message. One of the talks that you give as a speaker is called Dare to Win, in which you tell audiences that, quote, life is like 
a sports match. How do you play it and always get the victory to which God has called you? So, Paula, as we wrap up here, tell us about that message. Well, we are in a culture where we have to win on everything, where we push ourselves, but we have to think about like a champion and 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 that was every, all the ideas they put in my mind when I was a professional tennis player and when I was number one in my country and 200 in the world. But the, the biggest challenge of my life came. I lost everything. I lost my strength, my body, my will. And I was in a moment of my life that I was only able to speak. How can you dare to win doing that? You know, everything went against of, of everything I learned when I was little and when I was a champion. Mm-hmm. So it's, that talk is very deep because I learned that the best way to win was offering my sufferings. Mm. And when I was in the bed not being able to move, I understood that the best mission you can do is offering your sufferings. Mm. And doing that, it's very strange, but when you learn to do that, you get in a stage of privilege, and you get a special grace to go day by day with your challenges. Wow. It is very cool, it is very cool how the world presents us, or how we are doing things today. Paula was number one, Paula was the champion, Paula did this, Paula did that. But what do we say to the people that just accomplish little things? Mm. Do they win? Do they win? You know? So it's it's a very fine line on that. Yeah. Uh, of course they win. Our mission is with whatever we have available, anything we have available of knowledge, of body, give our best with that. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we we are close to people that know a lot about Catechism or, or the Bible, and they are so holy, and they can give way more of others. But our mission is to do that. So for me, I became a winner just being able to move one arm. I became a winner after spending 500 hours just to learn how to do one step. Mm. Wow. And that's the mentality. I am a winner when I give my best with what I have available every day. Sometimes emotionally we don't feel very well, but just try your best with what you have that day. That's right. That's right. Your your best for the Lord. And what is our ultimate what is our ultimate goal with my book, with what I'm saying, with what I'm doing, or your goal? Well, is to go to heaven, is to pull the soul to the Lord. Every story of my book is trying to do that. Every single minute that we spend doing anything for God, and that's why you have this program, Bruce, because you want to pull the sports people and everybody, hey, let's go to heaven with the best we can do. That's right. So I just want to motivate you, dare to win, but dare to win what? Dare to win the Quran to go to heaven. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Paula, so wonderful to talk to you. Thank you for your testimony, and I really appreciate you making time to be on Catholic Sports Radio. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much. I would love to be in touch with all of you. If you want to go to paulaspeaker.com, or you can also get my book, 40 Gifts of Hope, in Amazon. And let's keep in touch. I'm here to serve you and serve everybody on the Catholic community. Beautiful, beautiful. And folks, as a nod to the coaching that Paula does, not only, as you heard me say, Holy Spirit prep, but the coaching that she does through her own business, let's close with a prayer from the National Catholic Coaches Association and do it together, of course, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From 1 Corinthians 15, Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, 
knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Lord, it is so easy for me to lose perspective, to get focused on the little picture of my job rather than on the big picture of the work to which you've called me. Help me to persevere. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. This is Catholic Sports Radio. Find more at catholicsportsradio.net, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Cath Sports Radio on all those. C-A-T-H, at Cath Sports Radio. I'm Bruce Wozniak, and remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's that it's Jesus that you always choose.